there are two players. Uh, first player one selects a number x, which must be greater than or equal to zero. So x, so player one and player two. Player one chooses x, which is greater than or equal to zero, but there's no upper limit. Um, yes. Player two observes x, then simultaneously and independently, player one selects a number y1 and player two selects a number y2, at which point the game ends. Player one's payoff is blah blah, player two's payoff is blah blah. Represent the game uh, in the extensive form game, all right, in the extensive form. It doesn't ask to apply the concept of backward, uh, backward induction, but I'll, I'll do it. So, player one moves, he chooses a number between zero to infinity, uh, well, infinity is not a number to pick. Don't forget, okay? You can't choose x equal infinity. It's, it's not a number that you can pick. It says there's no upper bound, all right? Whatever number you pick, there's always a, a bigger one. So therefore, how am I going to write it? Well, uh, I just want to represent the boundaries. All right, it's not an action you can choose, but it's a boundary, zero and infinity. So we usually put this type of, uh, you know, um, an arrow indicate that every number between zero and infinity is possible. So that means there are infinitely many actions, uh, strategies here. So let's say player one picks X, all right? X again is in between zero and infinity. It's just one number. There are obviously infinitely many possible numbers he could pick. So that, I, I sort of draw this uh, just to visualize uh, just one uh, branch, but there are again infinitely many branches. Then player two and one, right? Player one and two simultaneously and independently selects a number. Okay, so here's sort of the challenging part. Player one chooses y1. Uh, what is y1, by the way? Can it be, I mean, can it be negative? Uh, it doesn't say anything. Select a number y1. So when you say select a number, that means y1 is a real number. Same for y2. All right, so it can be positive, it can be negative. So any number. So I'm gonna put it like this. From minus infinity to plus infinity. These are the boundaries. They're not numbers to pick. They're just boundaries but all the numbers in between these two are allowed, all right? But the thing is, whatever number player one picks, player two cannot observe this because they choose simultaneously, all right? So for example, y1, and then player two chooses, this is player two's info set, player two chooses y2 and again it's a number between minus infinity to plus infinity all right and then the game is over but because x y1 and y2 are chosen here are going to be the payoffs well th these are kind of complicated payoff functions u1 is equal to uh, y1 y2 uh, plus x y1 uh, minus y1 square, uh, God, minus x cubed divided by 3, I guess. And then u2 is equal to uh, minus y1 minus y2 square. All right? So that's the payoff. So obviously, as you change the value of x, as you change the value of y1 and y2, the payoff will change because the payoffs are here given as a function of y1, y2, and x. But this is what the game will look like. If this is not perfectly self-explanatory, this game is more like this, guys. Player 1 chooses an action ud. Alright, so if it is u, uh, player 1 again moves and chooses ht. And then player two moves and choose LR, LR. I can draw the same thing here. Player one, HT, player two, left, right, left, right. So what does that mean? That means player one first moves. 
he is choosing some action. Here, this is the simplified, very, very simplified version. U or D. Think of this like 0, 100. These are just two numbers he can pick. Player 1 and 2 can observe those numbers, and so there's going to be no info set here. So this is going to be in a sort of an independent sub-game, but again, I'm, I'm going to define what we mean by sub-game later. So this is another sub-game. So there's no info set combining these two, because player 1 and 2 can observe you can observe D. However, after choosing X, this is X region, player 1 is going to choose Y, Y1. Let's suppose there are two possible Ys. And player 2 after simultaneously chooses Y2, left or right. But the thing is, player 2 and 1 simultaneously choose Y1 and Y2, meaning they cannot observe each other's choices. So here, this is what this part will look like, but don't forget there are many X's possible. So in this very simple version, there are two X's. So we will have exactly the same uh, sort of partial game tree in this part. So this one is more complicated because there are infinitely many branches actually. I just draw one. Clear? So this is a game with imperfect information because player one and two cannot, uh, I mean, player two cannot observe all player one's actions, all right? And so that's it. This is how we represent this game tree. The question is, can I solve this game for uh, subgame perfect Nash equilibrium strategies? Again, the question is not asking this, but I would like to talk about it anyway. So here, yes, we can. We can apply the idea of backward induction how are we going to do this? Well, here, the important thing is, again, this week we're going to talk more about this. So if it is not perfectly clear now, fine, because next week, and the next week videos hopefully is going to make it clearer. But here, I mean, let's look at this final sub game. All right. Remember, there are two stages. Stage one, player one uh, chooses X. Stage two, player one and two chooses Y. So uh, what is really the last moving player? Is it player two really? No, it's actually this part of the game is the last uh, game. Why is that so? Well, here you can't say player two's optimal action is left here and player two's optimal action is right here, for example. Why not? Well, because player two cannot distinguish these two decision nodes. Remember, this is why they're in the same info set. So therefore, when you want to solve this part of the game, you have to solve it jointly, as if like this is a sort of one-shot game or a normal form game between player one and two, because they are choosing their actions simultaneously. There's no sequential move there, all right? Um, or sometimes we represent this game as follows. Player one chooses UD, and this is the game they play. Player one chooses head tail, player two chooses left, right, right. So can I represent it this way? Obviously. Uh, both these representations are perfectly uh, sort of legit. Here, I can't really represent it as, an, as a matrix game because there are infinitely many actions. All right, that's why I did not draw this as a matrix, uh, sort of partially matrix, partially game tree. All right, so we can represent either way. So probably this is sort of more self-explanatory. It's like why I have to solve this part as a, as a whole. So I need to find the Nash equilibrium here. And then I have to find the Nash equilibrium here. And then I have to see what player one is going to choose, U or D. So that means if I come to my more general game, I have to solve this part. Meaning, what is the Nash equilibrium Y1 and Y2? given x, obviously, and then after finding this, what's going to be the optimal x? Okay, so I know I am, uh, I'm going to steal some time from uh, my office hours, so I, I hope your classmates are going to forgive me for this, but let me finish this. Uh, it's going to take probably at most seven to ten minutes. 
So here's how we find the optimal strategies for Y1 and Y2. Well, remember U1, I shouldn't erase it. Um, so U1 was Y1, Y2 uh, plus XY1 minus Y1 square minus X cubed divided by three. So I would like to find the best response function for uh, player one. How do I do that? Well, what is the partial derivative with respect to y1? So it's going to be y2 plus x minus 2y1 minus 0. Has to be equal to 0, right? I'm solving the first order conditions. So therefore, y1 equals x plus y2 divided by 2. That means the best response function for player uh, 1 given to y2 and x obviously is equal to x plus y2 divided by 2. But this is nothing but y1 itself. All right. So same thing for player 2. It's minus y1 minus y2 square. Uh, you take the derivative, set it equal to 0 and solve for y2. Uh, but there's actually an easier way. So I am maximizing something minus. So minus square. So this guy is always positive. So this minus thing will, will be at most zero. All right. So when, when y2 is equal to y1. I mean, if, if you solve this, you're going to get exactly the same thing. Okay. I'm just cheating because I know that this utility function can be represented only if y2 is equal to y1. So what does that mean? That means... The best response of the second player, given x and y1, is equal to uh, uh, y1. Okay? So that means now I have to, I'm finding the Nash equilibrium. So I have to solve those best responses at the same time. Um, or if you like, you just uh, find the intersection point of those two best responses. Which means whenever you see y2, uh, which is equal to y1, just plug y1 here. So that means y1 equals, so this guy is going to bring me y1 equals x plus y2, which is y1 itself, divided by 2. If you solve this, it's 2y1 equals x plus y1, so y1 equals x. And because y1, y2 was equal to y1, y2 has to be equal to x as well. All right, so that means the Nash equilibrium y1, y2 is equal to xx. What does that mean? That means I, I erase the game tree, but whatever x player one chooses in the second part of the game, player one and two simultaneously choose y1 equals x, both of them. So then the question is what x is optimal? For who? For player one, because player one is the guy who chooses x. Well, now look at, so I'm erasing this whole part. So remember the utility function for player one is this guy. And he is trying to maximize by solving, uh, by choosing x. But he knows that y1 is going to be equal to y2, which is going to be equal to x in the next step. So therefore, he actually knows that his utility function should be considered as whenever you see y1 and y2, just plug x. x squared plus another x squared minus x squared minus x cubed divided by 3. And so that's nothing but x squared minus x cubed divided by 3. So what x maximizes this? I don't know. Solve the first order condition. Del u1 divided by del x equals 0. So if you take the derivative, it's 2x minus 3x squared divided by 3 equals 0. So that means 2x equals x squared. Either x equals 0 or x equals 2. So there are two critical points. Which one really maximizes this? u1 x equals 0 is going to take the value 0. u1 x equals 2 is going to take the value 4 minus 8 divided by 3, which is 4 divided by 3. Clearly, x equals 2 is the global maximum. 
So remember, this is a first order condition to find the critical points. That one, you don't really have to look at the second order conditions, just calculate the function's value when x is zero and x is two. So you see that x equals two is gonna deliver a higher uh, value. So therefore, x equals two is going to be the optimal. Hence, let me conclude here. The subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, not Nash equilibrium, but it's something stronger than this, is the following. X outcome. I'm not writing the strategy because we don't really have time. The subgame perfect Nash equilibrium outcome is going to be the following. X is going to be 2. Y1 is Y2, which is equal to uh, 2. Okay. 